I guess, briefly a little bit about um, what we're doing with CentOS in the enterprise. Um, this talk will be a little bit historical and a little bit future planning for what we're going on. Uh, the technical aspect for this is pretty much going to be what happens next with Brian Stinson's talk. So I'll give him a, a little bit of a, a build up and then we can all harass him if it uh, doesn't seem to go too well. Essentially, we came late to the ARM party. Um, I didn't start actually working on ARM development for CentOS until exactly about this time last year. We're, we're within a day of right exactly when we got started. Um, so we were a little late that way in what we were doing for ARM. No, seriously, advance. There we go. Uh, and we started doing the initial bootstrap on the, the uh, fast model, which took a while. But once the word got out that we were starting to look at um, uh, doing CentOS on ARM for enterprise workloads, magically hardware showed up. So to the vendors who have contributed hardware to us, I really want to say thank you. Without that, it would have, the, the, the fast model build would probably just now be finishing up. Uh, that that uh, takes a little bit of, of time to run through. Um, and initially it was Applied Micro who gave us the, the first piece of hardware that we were using. Um, and then once we started getting a little further into the release, we started getting more from other vendors so that we could start testing things. And then about uh, six months or so after our initial builds, right around uh, Connect, we announced the GA release. So six months from inception to release and we were there. We had uh, two, two betas that we put out for some of our testing for what we had to do and work through a few pain points that way. Um, but in September, August, September last year, we announced GA. We had two vendors who were providing hardware support for us so we could validate their platforms. We have expanded that now. We're up to four, working on five, I believe. Um, and we had uh, Zen virtualization support. We demoed OpenStack using the, the Zen hypervisor. And we had added uh, experimental support for the early builds of the, the 1.4 beta Golang that had uh, ARCH64 support and Docker involved. So now that we've moved that from the experimental tree into our, our uh, mainline supported tree and our extras repository. Um, so I'm going to go a little quick on this. I'm going to try and make up some of the, the time that, that uh, was shaved off at the beginning so that Brian's got his time to do uh, his full talk. Uh, so what we've added since then, between Connect uh, 15 in, in uh, Burlingame and where we are now, we've gotten um, a lot more KVM support built in. Um, there were some boot pieces that we missed for KVM support initially, uh, doing the, the UEFI piece with uh, the Tiano core packages that are needed to put into the distribution the licensing around some of the, the EDK2 stuff was a little interesting. We had to make sure that we were cleared through our legal department for that to be able to distribute it and not get in trouble with the, uh, uh, the it's, it, it's BSD licensed, but that restrictions clause that's tacked on the end of it gets a little problematic at times, and, and the, the lawyers wanted to make sure that no one was going to get sued or otherwise in trouble for it. Uh, we've added uh, improved hardware support for some of the newer platforms coming out. So some of the, the newer devices that you'll see around here, we're pulling in additional patches for that. We are adding in uh, functionality for three new platforms, and we will be coming up with, uh, uh, early next week, we'll have a new installer that is built for those newer platforms as they cycle through. So uh, what else do we have? Uh, improved Docker functionality. The newer Golangs have really improved how they support ARM64. The initial builds, the, the early 1.4 beta and the um, early 1.5 builds were kind of sketchy. They, they made some assumptions about page size that weren't necessarily entirely correct. Um, a lot of that had to be worked through and get fixed. So we've got that in place. And we are now regularly building base Docker containers for CentOS that are ARM64 specific. Um, and we have those tagged into a 
separate repository area on Docker Hub, and we're hoping to push those in um, a more official place in the near future. So um, the cockpit integration system is, a, or the, the cockpit system administration system is a web front end for ostensibly for containers, but use, useful for a number of other things as well. So multi-server uh, reference platform, you can pull in containers from multiple hosts, you can use it to do network configuration, storage configuration, uh, a number of other things. So we, we've got that functional and in place now. Um, you can, it, it's a simple yum install to pull that in. And we're opening up um, a community build system and community CI. So we will have that, the community builders will be available for, they're, they're in place now, they'll be available to use next week, and the CI will be a future improvement um, that hopefully will be coming in the next uh, two months or so. So we'll get that plumbed in, and what that allows us to do is automate all of our testing in a completely public and transparent fashion. So the, the folks who choose to come build their platform or, or their software utilities with us, uh, Gluster, Ceph, OpenStack, things like that, all of the same validation that runs on the x86-64 platform will be run against the ARM platform as well. So we'll have total end-to-end -end testing for all of the community-oriented um, platforms that, that we're uh, engaged with. Uh, what do I have up here? Uh, oh, so on a, a step back from the server side, one of the biggest ways that we found to get people involved in ARM64 efforts or to get interested in ARM64 is actually to be able to hand them an ARM64 board and say, here, go play with this. And to that end, there are a few that are, are easily available to do that, the Heike being one, uh, the, the Cello and Husky hopefully coming soon will be able to do the same thing. Um, so we've had Heike support uh, since about a month after the last Connect. Um, we've got a, a distribution built for that that is, the, the installer piece is not necessarily where we want it to be, but there are some limitations around that. It's basically just a, a disk image, DD it down, uh, put your, your SD card on the Heike, power it on, and you're off and running. The Pine64 support is going to be very interesting. This is also another low-cost board. Uh, it, it's almost at a price point where I'm considering just handing them out at conferences. They have advertised a, a $15 price point, and usually for, um, I'm probably cheating by saying this, our, our conference swag budget is usually, uh, what, $8 a shirt or something like that for the, the conferences where we're handing that out. So what's another few dollars to spend and actually hand somebody a functional, hey, here's an ARM board, go play with this, go run CentOS, fully installed, um, just go play with it and use it. So we're, we're looking to have the, uh, the Pinebox, or the, the Pine64 set up next, and then the Geekbox is another uh, consumer-style middle-of-the-road uh, ARM64 platform that we're looking at targeting as well. And these are mostly just to generate interest and, and for users to be able to take it home and play with it on their own and see what they can do with it and come up with new things to get that developer interest involved. So that's uh, some of what we're working on for that side. So it's not necessarily you know, the, the, the server, the, the leg standard, but getting that groundswell, getting the, the users interested in what we're doing is important, and being able to just hand them a board or hand them an image or give them a low-cost option um, that isn't, hey, go buy this server and have noisy fans in your home office. It, it, it's a great way to get the, the individual developers and contributors involved. Uh, so I mentioned Cockpit, and what I wanted to do was go through a couple of uh, uh, slides about that just to, to show folks what it is. And essentially, here's a, a screenshot for the cockpit instance that I have running at my house. Um, you can see the, the host name. This is running on uh, one of the, the Mustang development platforms. And it tells you straight up what the, the hardware platform is. If I had bothered to assign uh, an asset tag to it, asset tags are more um, the, the enterprise user feature. I haven't bothered to set any of that up in my home. Um, the release, whether or not it's connected to an Active Directory domain, if I wanted to do the, the domain join straight from here, I'm able to do that. Uh, disk usage, network usage, memory usage, it gives you 
a graphical overview of everything and you can register multiple servers in this so you have a complete snapshot for what's going on with all of the hardware in your network that gives a nice pretty picture and makes managers happy. Uh, and again, more, more uh, pretty pictures for the, the folks who like their graphs and the, the, the displays for what's going on. Um, in this instance, we have a couple of containers that are in process. One is just hanging out idle at the bottom. You can see that container's listed as stopped. The second container is actually doing a build process. And if you look at the memory usage and the CPU usage, this snapshot was actually done during a container build operation. So you can see, uh, as, as it's doing various things, you can see the CPU activity changing. You can see the memory allocation ramping up as the container's under uh, construction. Cockpit also gives you a web interface directly into a shell on the box. So if you needed to do an operation locally, you have that ability um, once you log into Cockpit to, to get root shell access or, or your user access into um, your host system to do whatever it is you need to do. So it's, it's basically an easier way for uh, people who aren't as comfortable on the command line to still do the operations that they need, and Cockpit gives them a nice management interface to that. Um, so with all of this coming around, basically what, what it boils down to is we have the distribution now as mostly a solved problem. At this point, we're just expanding the hardware support, but that's not interesting to you guys. That's, that's where it's fun for me. What matters for the community is what we can do as far as pushing the the reference platforms and the standards. And so now what we're doing is working uh, with Lenaro on the, the standards base to be an implementation of their reference platform for the standards that they're trying to push out. So the, the folks from Lenaro keep saying, you know, we're not a distro, we're not a distro. We're going to be uh, an implementation of what they're putting out for the standards. So you'll be able to, through the, the CentOS framework and the CentOS CDN, you'll be able to, to easily consume, essentially through a yum install, the various standards that the Lenaro folks are developing. So OpenStack, um, uh, uh, ODPI through Hadoop, or you know, things like that. Um, a lot of the Java work, a lot of the, the firmware frameworks, we're going to have an implementation of this that is easy to consume. And what we're trying to get to a point where on the, the server side, it's just a simple yum install operation to do all of this. And if it's, if the, the reference implementation, if that standard is there and easy to use, then it's more likely to be a, a, an adopted thing that the industry as a whole gets to enjoy the benefits from. So that, that's kind of where we're moving on that. Feel free to throw questions at me. I, I hate just talking at an audience. If you guys have questions, feel free to contribute. So does anybody? No, come on, some hands. I have stickers. We'll, we'll reward people with stickers if they ask questions. <laughs> okay, that's pretty much all I've got. Um, if anybody has questions, um, I burned through that a little quick, so we caught up on time. I'm still, yeah, I think, yeah, we're, we're, we're good for time. Brian, I, I think I have caught you back up so you have the full time. Brian Stinson has the, the actual technical piece of the, this talk. He's doing a, a continuous integration and our, our testing piece, the build platform. So that's, he has what everybody's actually here to see. I'm just giving the basic history overview for what's going on. So Brian, it is, it is all you. I have one right Oh, yes, please. Is there any plan for the CentOS Yes. However, at this point, we're basically, None of the platforms that we have actually have a, a, a display as part of the board. Um, so we can take a, an ACPI card or a, a PCI card, we can take you know, a, a Radeon card or whatever and put in the PCI slot and hope it works and test it. But what I would prefer to get uh, is a board that actually has um, HDMI out or something along those lines that, that has a console that we can actually work with locally. On the consumer side, I may work for doing that. I, I want to try to get to that point, but honestly, the, the consumer board side, the, the Geekbox side, I'm more interested in using those as a way to get the developers interested. I haven't looked at full-on 
graphics enablement or anything along those lines. So we have those packages built, but I haven't used them or tested them to make sure that they're, they're functioning as, as designed. So that, that is in the works. It's just not something that I have been concerned about validating yet. Mm -hmm. Chris. Yes. Correct. So, so you bring up something that I should have included in my talk and I did not. Thank you for that. Um, what we're doing, the question is basically, do we track Red Hat or do we, are we a developer platform or what are we gonna do? And the answer is we're doing both. So the initial release is uh, uh, right now when, when, uh, when Red Hat dropped the source code 472 into uh, git.centos, we took that and we built a distribution that was essentially uh, the, the RELSA code built by us. That's fine, that's great, we can hand that out, but we have folks that want us to also enable more hardware. There are other platforms that have come out and that are becoming available now since 7.2 has dropped. So we're not doing a lot of additional enablement, we're just doing feature things that, that Red Hat will catch up to um, so there's a little bit of a dual stack there. It, it is a fine line that we're walking. We're, we're trying to stay compatible with what Red Hat's offering because that is absolutely important. But at the same time, we're also offering, if users choose to enable the additional repository, then they, they can essentially say, I'm staying exactly where you know, Red Hat is so I can test my development for Red Hat once that product is available. But I really want this one feature that's a little bit ahead. So they can choose to enable that one feature. If they do nothing, then they get the, the, the Red Hat or CentOS experience as expected. If they enable that secondary repository, then they can get some of the additional stuff that they want. So it, it's kind of a, a choose your own adventure, how brave do you want to be kind of thing. Yes and no. There is no official feedback loop. There is no... Um, that, the program managers are not you know, asking us for numbers or stats or development or anything else, but it, it would be naive of me to say that Red Hat does not have their eye on us. If, if they are seeing a feature take off that they think would make you know, a good business case, it, it is absolutely within the realm of possibility that that would be you know, taken advice from the community and, and put into a product but there is not that direct feedback loop. It, I'm not having regular meetings with RHEL PM saying, hey, we're, we're gonna do this and it would be great if. It's just, oh, hey, man, the community's really focusing on this one feature. Maybe we should pull that in. That, that makes sense and you know, we, we can sell this. So they, they watch what we do, but there isn't that official communication. So any, any other questions for what we're doing? Yes. So the relationship between CentOS and Red Hat, um, I am a Red Hat employee, I work for Red Hat, but I am essentially exclusively assigned to CentOS. We are community focused and that is, that is where it, basically Red Hat sponsors through employment the production or development of CentOS. Um, and what that allows is the community to be able to take something like what we're doing for uh, the, the distribution right now, and for them to see what features are being used in the community, what, what makes sense, what is being ignored, um, things like that. So they are keeping an eye on what we do, but they are not dictating how we do it, what we do, or anything else. 
the, the idea is if you take CentOS right now and you're doing development um, of a product based on or that, that runs on top of CentOS, it would be able to run on top of RHEL if you have need for commercial support down the road. Because we're, we're never, as a community organization, we're never going to supply support. That just isn't going to happen. If, if you call us and say, hey, I, I need support for this, I'm going to say, great, call 1-900-RED-HAT. That, that's not the actual phone number. It's, you, but, you know, it's talk to Red Hat, talk to the sales guys, talk to the support guys, go nuts. No? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.